question that would come into your mind is why do we study measures of dispersion under statistics and we have a very simple example and an answer for you so we have two sets of groups with five individuals in each of the groups and the scores they obtained during the event that happened now the set a or set xyz let me keep it as set xyz and set m and o so this set xyz has five variables the variables are 52 55 50 48 and 45 now here the values are very very close to 50 if i take a mean of those we already know how we calculate the mean so mean is nothing but the sum of the scores divided by the number of the scores so here we say 52 plus 55 plus 50 plus 48 plus 45 divided by how many counts so 1 2 3 4 5 so i divide it by 5 and i have a mean of 50 now let me move to set mno set mno again 28 plus 0 plus 98 plus 55 plus 69 i add them all and divide it by 5 so again i have a value of 50 so in both these cases the mean is 50 but what is the difference definitely there is a difference now this difference can be simply cited through what a simple phenomena which is range what is range the difference between the highest and the lowest values so in the first case what is the lowest value in the first case the lowest value is 45 what is the highest value 55 so what is my range 55 minus 45 so my range is 10 here let's move to the next set mno here my lowest values are 0 and 98 so what is my range my range here is 98 minus 0 which gives 98 now definitely understanding the fact that both of these sets have the same mean still the range is significantly different now since the range is different it gives a better picture in terms of distribution in terms of dispersion in terms of variability that can be seen so what is this dispersion dispersion is nothing but scattering of scores a simple scattering of light that we see and we call it the dispersion effect Similarly, in statistics, it's numbers that we play with. So, it is a scattering of the scores or the numbers. Now, this is scattering of the scores and the numbers is what is known as dispersion. In the first case, the scores were very, very close to the mean value and the curve was relatively steeper. In the second case, the scores are very far off. So, the curve would be relatively gentler. So, this is the difference between the first curve and the second curve and this Please the dispersion. Now, why is dispersion important? Dispersion gives us an idea about the type of series, the composition and the distribution within the series and it also helps us to compare the kind of homogeneous nature of the data or the stability within the data and therefore dispersion is very very important and essential to understand. As I mentioned, this method of dispersion can be understood under five heads this is the range quartile deviation standard deviation mean deviation and lorentz curve most commonly used among all of the methods of dispersion range is what we have already discussed so the highest value minus the lowest value would give you the range quartile deviation is q3 minus q1 the quartile 3 minus quartile 1 divided by 2 would give you the quartile deviation the standard deviation is the absolute dispersion uh, absolute measure of the dispersion uh, which is explained through standard deviation once we know the standard deviation since for the standard deviation we also know the mean we can also find out the coefficient of variation and coefficient of variation gives the relative measure of dispersion so a very important difference between standard deviation and coefficient of variation i repeat again <coughs> standard deviation actually gives you the absolute measure of dispersion however coefficient of variation which is simply explained as the standard deviation divided by mean into 100 gives you a relative measure of dispersion and since it is relative it is 
important to understand in the dispersion mean deviation is always about the mean and it is calculated with uh, absolute values and then lorentz curve helps us explain the inequality in the distribution so those are some of the common ways under which we understand dispersion a very very important concept and why we take dispersion into account and not just central tendency so measures of central tendency as we know is mean mode and median but still we take dispersion in into account in the cases where the we need to understand whether the data is very close to the mean value or the data is highly away from the mean value and this explains the dispersion the scattering of the scores so how the scores or the numbers or the data is scattered is better understood through the method of dispersion